Well, that's uh, the close for our second session of 10 by 20s. I'd like to give all our presenters a nice big round of applause for participating. Now, when we set up the instructions for the 10 by 20s, you know, we uh, did communicate an expectation that this would be something that you should be very willing to do and eager to do within your role as science policy leaders. But it doesn't necessarily need to be here and it doesn't need to end here. There are plenty of other forums for you to find, both internal to the channels that you're using professionally, but just you know, church groups, Lions Clubs, uh, the local community centers. There's tons of places to really get the messages that you're working on uh, to a variety of audiences. So please think about that as uh, targets for you. Uh, it's also great to see this, you know, because we're not in your day-to-day uh, -day work, we don't see your day-to-day -day work, uh, this is really where we get a lot of the, the look at the return on investment that we're making, the Triple S has made, and the societies and all the other partners uh, in what you work on. Um, to keep with that theme, though, uh, uh, one administrative announcement. Everybody should have gotten some note about reports and uh, feedback back to the organization. I know earlier, um, um, Facebook, Fellow Central was mentioned about your profile, it is very important for you to submit your information to us to make sure that your profiles are always up to date um, because you never know when this kind of experience will come back uh, to benefit you and the easier that we can track you down, the better. So please be mindful of your report. If you have any questions, please uh, talk to your program managers. And with that, thank you everybody. Uh, I'm gonna let Cynthia close us out with our final presentation. The name, Cynthia Robinson, Director of the Science and Technology Policy Fellowships. And, you know, today, this, this whole day has been designed as an opportunity to really touch base as the year is winding down and coming to a close for next month. Um, a lot of our goal has been to celebrate achievements, and part of that was to have some of those highlighted. We wish that we could have all 280 fellows uh, giving presentations. Obviously not possible, this could not be a one-day event, but having such great snippets and such a range of activities uh, that you've been in was, has really been wonderful. And the other reason that we like to have these events every year, other than um, that celebration and reconnection, is also a chance to um, do acknowledgments um, to the different organizations and individuals uh, and other entities who have contributed so much to this program um, over the year. I'm delighted that some of the fellows, uh, mentors are here, points of contacts in the office, their colleagues. Um, we have some representative uh, beyond that of program officers from the host agencies, different partner societies, um, advisory and selection committee members, and I think that there, I know that there are also some family members here um, uh, of fellows. So we're really thrilled that you are all here with us to celebrate um, the uh, coming to the end of the year of this 42nd uh, class of s Policy Fellows. And as I said, the, um, what's been demonstrated uh, in those uh, presentations today and also the posters that uh, I know some of you had a chance to look at them already and we'll have more chance through the reception, but it's really impressive the kinds of things that fellows are able to do, the, the range of projects that people are able to engage in by being curious, open-minded, willing to uh, commit time and energy and just be flexible about opportunities as they come up. Um, it's, there's no doubt um, that all of you have been active players in policy initiatives that impact us here in the nation, but also clearly uh, internationally. And it's also clear that this class, um, you as individuals and as a group, has really made a mark already in Washington, D.C. and clearly beyond. And I can tell you that we on the fellowships team take great pride uh, and pleasure in watching um, as the year progresses how um, you as fellows 
expand in your knowledge, um, your policy knowledge and skills, um, your responses to both um, the opportunities as well as the challenges that the years present, because they always do, um, but especially, again, the contributions that you've been able to make. Um, one of the, I want to also, uh, of course, again, thank, as Eddie already did, uh, the individuals who did their uh, presentations today. It's been an impressive group. Um, and uh, they also, uh, what we love about this is, is that it's a great way for us to uh, demonstrate to, especially the um, individuals who are here from the host office, um, some of the outputs of the investment, uh, your investment, into the fellows in your offices, to the different professional development programs that we have throughout the year three tracks focusing on communications, policy, and leadership, and I think there were clearly some great examples here of that communications training um, coming to the fore in terms of making uh, clear and coherent um, pitches and really using a storytelling approach to try to engage and communicate about projects. Also, um, again, I just mentioned the posters, and uh, we're, we're thrilled to have uh, a number of folks who are presenting posters, again, from across the agencies and different kinds of projects, both indi individual projects and the affinity groups. Um, so with thanks uh, to all of you, uh, the current fellows who are doing that, and I also just want to give a special shout out to um, their two alumni fellows, April Hadari and Audrey Aichita, um, who also have a poster, because it's a great example, again, as I was talking this morning about continuing to be engaged, and a an opportunity to remind you, uh, for those of you wrapping up and moving on to other things beyond the fellowship, that the affinity groups are not exclusively for current fellows. Um, we heard from a number of groups that the, uh, the lists um, and the sharing that those group groups do are very large, and um, we've had some of those affinity groups operating now for about 10 years, um, and individuals from the very first year still uh, continue to be engaged, even though they're not here in Washington, D.C. anymore. So those things are available to you long term. Um, and I think, again, both the, these audiovisual presentations and the poster presentations, and of course the abstracts that we're going to get from you and the information we're going to get from you and the reports that you submit, which we then will turn around and provide to the host offices, are really fabulous demonstrations of the richness um, of the fellowship experiences, the contributions of the time and energy um, and the knowledge that fellows can offer to host offices, but in particular, um, the exciting opportunities and what comes out of host offices making these opportunities available for placements that offer learning by doing. And on that note, I just want to acknowledge that we are truly indebted um, to the many different organizations and offices that host fellows, the mentors and supervisors and agency liaisons in the executive, judicial, and legislative branches who offer significant time and energy to guiding fellows, trying to make connections for them, um, hopefully creating um, as many interesting opportunities as possible um, for connections, not only in the office um, and beyond. So truly, we, couldn't, we could not run this program without, without our great uh, dedicated um, partner agencies and host offices. You know, and there are many, many individuals um, to, to acknowledge. Again, it would be too long for me to go through names. We have 280, I think this year, um, 89 fellows. So there are uh, potentially that many mentors and, and uh, points of contact, although some of them do um, host and, and uh, mentor more than one fellow. And we are grateful to all of them. Um, today, though, I'd like to acknowledge two individuals in particular um, who have been very special to us uh, in the program, who have actually moved now on into new roles and will no longer be engaged in the fellowship activities. Um, and they're going to be missed tremendously. Uh, I know not only by the fellows um, who have been in the agencies where they um, have uh, been serving, but also um, the, S the s and Policy Fellowship staff, STPF staff, are going to miss them a lot as well. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge, I don't see is Sherry here yet? No, but I know that Diane Hanneman is here, so I do want to acknowledge Diane. <laughs> that is absolutely well deserved, and now I'll tell my little tale about. Diane, and I want to acknowledge a number of things. One, one of the things that it re is really uh, very special for us as staff uh, in, the, in the fellowship program 
is when fellows, uh, individuals who have been fellows themselves, come back and pay it forward by returning to agencies and serving in senior roles. I know that there are some other um, there are mentors and points of contact uh, here in the room who are uh, alumni of this program. But it's, it's really exciting. Uh, in this case, Diane had a chance to start her fellowship at NIH, uh, went on to another fellowship um, experience at the State Department, um, did some other things, and then had a chance to come back to NIH um, and help uh, take a program that had already been um, thriving there and growing and really take it up to a next level. Uh, it's been phenomenal. And I think that happens a lot by um, the kind of dedication and thought and real true deep caring about the experiences of fellows. And that certainly happens um, from individuals or program officers who have not been fellows, but in particular, someone who's had that experience of a fellow can really bring that back. Um, and Diane has gone above and beyond um, sitting in on all of the site visits that happen with the fellows. And NIH is a large host agency, so there were a lot of site visits that happened there. I know that she's been supportive to fellows reviewing CVs and resumes and ideas about where to connect for projects um, while in, in folks are working as a fellow, but also beyond that for their careers. And those things, those are the kinds of things that really make a difference for a program being um, not only successful, but just leaving a, a wonderful feeling about the connections with an agency when someone moves on beyond it. And I will say NIH is one of those agencies, it's not wasn't ever surprising to me that actually that um, Diane came back, although I'm kind of surprised they let you go, <laughs> um, because NIH is one of our agencies that's known for um, really uh, taking advantage of the fellows in terms of having an opportunity to give them um, more full-time experiences after their fellowships, and that's been great. I know Diane has already gone on to an exciting new position, but I will ask her to please come up here um, to the podium, because we have a little something we'd like to give to her. Just um, uh, an acknowledgement and recognition of Diane's uh, important contribution to the su success of the AAAS Science and Technology Policy Fellowships. So oh. thank you very much. Oh. Thank you. theme a little bit later if she's able to show up before we before I wrap up my comments um, but we'll be able to celebrate and we have something special for her too uh, for her as well um, I'll come back to the comments if she's not here I will share um, my comments about her before I do wrap up even if she's not here um, but I want to move on and um, thank some other uh, of our um, it really important uh, stakeholders and constituents as well one more click here and that is our um, a, a partner, uh, Scientific and Engineering Societies. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the history of our program, we started in 1973 as a partnership of um, several um, scientific and engineering societies that were willing to take a leap and take a risk and, and try having fellows on the Hill and see what, what might happen. And here we are, 42 classes later. It obviously was a successful gamble. Um, and we're very, very proud of that. And um, over the years, we actually have um, collaborated with more than uh, 60 different scientific and engineering societies. This is, these are not all the logos of um, all of the current partners. Um, these are the ones that we actually could get to their websites and kind of snitch their logo off of it. Um, so some of them we, we don't have, um, but we have about 35, uh, currently about 35 um, partner scientific and engineering societies, and I just want to acknowledge all of them. Do we have some of the representatives for our, from our uh, partner societies here today? I know we have at least one. Um, okay, yes, right here. Um, so again, I want to acknowledge the role they have. Uh, partner societies fund uh, predominantly fellows on uh, Capitol Hill, but they also there are also a number of um, societies that, that um, do support fellows um, in the executive branch. 
Um, if you don't, again, I, we don't have all of our logos up here, but I do want to encourage you um, that uh, if you are aware of our list, and our list is available on our website of all of our partner scientific and engineering societies, we are always seeking new, new partners. Um, every year on the Hill, we typically get requests be for between about 50 and, and 80 offices that would like to host fellows, and we only have about 35, um, 35 or 36 fellows a year. There might even be a few lower than that this year. So if your um, per personal uh, society uh, is not currently a partner, we would welcome hearing from you and would be very happy to strategize with you about how we might um, encourage them to consider um, hosting uh, fellows uh, on the Hill and, and beyond that. I also want to acknowledge there are so many uh, individuals and organizations that, that have a role in the success of this program. Of course, um, um, the uh, as I already mentioned, the agencies uh, that fund and host the fellows, uh, the partner societies. There are other funders um, who host uh, different fellowships. We have foundations who host, uh, uh, who sponsor a number of fellowships and, and other groups. And a lot of individuals who take a role in, in just making this program operate. Um, without them, um, we wouldn't be able to function. And for example, that includes our selection committee members, um, trainers, the advisory committee members who give us significant advice and, and counsel um, every year to keep the program um, at the high quality that we want it to, to always be. There are organizations like the Congressional Research Service and many other entities uh, that we tried to introduce you to during orientation and through different professional development programs and events and things that happen at AAAS. And then, of course, speaking of AAAS, uh, we uh, sit, this program sits within the Center for Science Policy and Society programs. And AAAS has a huge range of um, other programs, as I think most of you know. Um, and they enrich this fellowship in many, many ways. The Office of Government Relations, the Science Diplomacy Program, um, the Education and, and um, Human Resources programs, uh, our Project 2061. Uh, science and human rights, uh, research competitiveness, dialogue on science, ethics, and religion. So there are so many that are active, and I just want to acknowledge them as well, and the roles that they play in helping to make sure that we have lots of resources and things available for you um, uh, to make it a rich experience every year. Um, and I want to acknowledge you, the fellows uh, in this class. You took a leap, uh, dived deep, <laughs> into this science policy pool, um, working at this intersection of science, technology, and policy, and devoting your time, effort, talent, energy for a year in public service to the government. And we are tremendously grateful for that. Um, I also want to acknowledge, in, in addition to all of the work, um, some examples shown today uh, of the kinds of things that you do in your offices, um, as you also heard, there are very active affinity groups that have been doing fantastic programming that um, bring others into our network, uh, not just to know about our program, but the resources and the kinds of programming that the affinity groups are, are producing are giving resources back to those groups who, who are being enriched by those activities. Of course, there are the happy hour organizers who have been ensuring that there's a lot of uh, fun, um, supportive kinds of activities to, to create um, cohesion in the network. And I understand that there is going to be a happy hour tonight, yeah. correct? Where will that be? 18th Street Lounge. Okay, 18th Street Lounge. So after we have our reception here, more activities to go to there. Um, I also want to thank, I know that a lot of you have also, in addition to the affinity groups we have, there are a lot of social groups that have been very active doing different kinds of outings and organizing tours and things so that you have a lot of opportunity to connect um, as, a, as a group outside of your professional settings. I also would like to acknowledge the family members and friends of the fellows who have been so supportive of what we know is often very crazy and intense schedules. Um, and we are, we are clear that um, their support of all of you to really engage fully in this uh, fellowship year is, is critically important. So thanks for that. Um, I also, of course, want to take advantage of this opportunity to acknowledge all of my colleagues on the STFP team, uh, the staff who work uh, really diligently um, year-round to make sure that our program operates very smoothly. It takes definitely a great team to orchestrate and implement uh, this program. There are so many moving parts from 
um, the recruitment, outreach and marketing, selection and placement, professional development, monitoring evaluation, day-to-day -day support of fellows and, and host offices, finance and administration, um, the security in the online system, special events, and alumni relations. Um, and that's not to mention all the different kinds of special projects that we get engaged in too. So there's a lot that happens. Um, and I would just like to ask all of my colleagues uh, who are in the room to stand and uh, be acknowledged, please. <laughs> truly a great group um, and I also want to specifically acknowledge um, uh, Eddie uh, and Kristen uh, today uh, who took the lead in planning uh, this particular event uh, and the send-off and then and of course as you could see from from the day lots of other uh, staff on the team have been helping out to, to make sure that uh, the wheels are turning smoothly again on this day it's a great example of that teamwork um, so you know seeing your engagement learning uh, contributions it really is a source of pride, uh, as I said already, for, for not only for the s and Policy Fellowships Program staff, but for AAAS as a whole. Um, it, every uh, time we have a board meeting, um, I'm asked to come and give them some tidbits about what the program's doing, and we call it the board brag. And there are always a lot of great slides about what fellows have been doing and, and the kinds of opportunities that host offices are providing. So there's a lot of acknowledgement of this program at AAAS um, and how important it is for the organization. Um, because we really consider you our s and policy ambassadors um, in the activities that you're going to go um, out to do, of course this year, but, uh, but also um, beyond. Um, so I want to wish you, on behalf of AAAS, wish all of you fellows um, much, much success in what comes next. Um, a huge thank you for what you've already contributed um, and, what, and what will be to come. And we're gonna have a chance to toast to that as we tend to like to do when we have our receptions. Um, and in a few moments, we will head out for the reception, uh, which is basically revolving around the poster, so you have a chance to see those and continue what started at the very beginning of the year, lots more networking. But before we do that, we have a little bit of a treat for you and a preview of this uh, photo project that we asked you to participate in.
my colleagues, all of you for particip participating in that. We've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos. We'll figure out a way to share them with you so you can yourself put them up on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter them out and help us do some more social media and help us recruit folks for the next class. I want to particularly thank Stephanie, who had to sort through hundreds already just to put together this, this brief piece. And Barry and Olga and the rest of the team who, who helped frame that and put that together and others on the program team. So again, thank you very much. We are ready to go out and celebrate. Woo!